Gauls apparently knew several legends about their own origin, or maybe there have been several versions of the same legend. In his writings about the Gauls, Caesar reports that they claim to descend from this potter, a Roman underworldly deity, a god of the dead. The Gauls claim that they are all descended from one father, Dix, and they say that this is a teaching of the Druids. For this reason, they define the passage of time by nights rather than days. They observe birthdays and the starting months and years in this way, with day coming after night. Of course, this is another example of Interpretatio Romana, but apparently the Gaulish Swiss taught a divine ancestry in their lore. Which Gaulish divinity Caesar identifies with the Roman despot remains a secret, though. This is a question heavily discussed in science since countless years. There are many theses about which Gaulish god could have been meant by this potter. One of the most established scientific theses, suggested to widely worshipped to Celts, evidenced all over Gaul, is the Gaulish god Caesar equated with this potter. The Roman this potter, however, was a Ctonic, an underworldly god. The same is true for Sucellus, an underworldly god of the Gauls. His iconography indicates parallels with this potter. And the theory Sucellus equals Gaulish Dispotter is widely spread. It is not possible, though, to completely substantiate that it is true. After all, we still just don't know. The Greek historian Strabo reports in his Geographica that the Celtiberians and their northern neighbors, as he writes, had the tradition to feast and dance in front of their houses and in their street with kith and kin until dawn and every full moon night in honor of a nameless god. This passage in Strabo's writings has also been discussed in science for a long time. On one hand, Strabo's geographical directions are quite vague. He speaks of the Celtic Murins, yes, but it can't be entirely determined which of their northern neighbors he meant. Was it all Gauls or just certain tribes? On the other hand, the described full moon tradition rose questions and most of all, this ominous nameless god. For many years, diverse scientists saw an indication for a Gaulish moon cult in Strabo's passage, believing that the moon itself was this nameless god the Gauls worship. Yet, for many reasons, this thesis was dismissed as untenable. Only the profound scientific and astronomical knowledge of the Gauls makes such a conclusion look pretty odd. The first sustainable thesis on Strabo's passage comes from the Spanish scientist Marco Simon. He could illustrate that Strabo explicitly mentioned a nameless god due to the keen Hellenistic mentality regarding the anthropological polarity between civilization and barbarism. So it remains unclear if the mentioned god was nameless indeed, but it's more likely that Strabo simply tried to emphasize the uncivilized character of the Celtiberians by mentioning this. For atheism or ignorance about religious things was regarded equivalent with barbarism and illiteracy by the ancient Greeks. Simon, however, even established a further thesis. He says that this ominous, nameless god is identical with the god the Gauls believe to be descendants of, regarding his character, function and attributes. He also comes to the conclusion that the god that was identified with the Roman despot by Caesar has his closest match in Zochelus. According to Simon, this anonymous god mentioned by Strabo is, alike, this potter and Zuchelus, a polyfunctional god, a highest ruler, commander of time, and most likely also lord of the other world. The Gaulish calendar, counting days, months, and years by nights rather than days, which is confirmed by Caesar but also by other sources, implies a close link between the Gaulish despotter and the moon. Yet this does not mean that the moon and stars themselves have been worshipped, of course. In Roman religion, for instance, the Idas, the full moon days, were dedicated to Jupiter too, the Romans' highest god. Interesting here is Sucellus Paridra's name, Nanta Suelta. There are several theses about its etymology. One of them suggests she of the sun-warmed valley. Being connected to the power of the sun, she would indeed make a reasonable parija to Sukellus, given his link to the night and the moon. 
Another interesting fact is that the Celtiberians also knew specific dignitaries, heralds according to the Roman historian Apianus. Heralds that were robed in wolfskins, just like Zucellus himself. As interesting such thoughts and assumptions may be, we still have to be clear about the fact that they remain hypothetical.